Welcome. We now have a look at the last part of this module, which is the AC and DC generators. We've already um, used uh, Faraday's law to have a look at the fundamentals of um, generation of electricity, because we know that EMF is equal to minus M to thi beta T. And this formula represents what is the EMF generation in a coil as we turn that coil in the presence of a magnetic field. And the rate of change of flux, that's the thi beta T, um, the, the way that the flux varies through this coil and the number of loops in this coil will uh, determine how much EMF is done. So we're looking basically not so much at Faraday's law today, but at the engineering of the AC and DC generators. What actually <coughs> composes them, what is their functions of these compositions and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so there is a worksheet associated. So if you um, associate it with this, so if you haven't had time to um, get that worksheet, could you please get it up now? Um, it's this worksheet here. Oops, all that stuff there. Um, it's electromagnetism worksheet 6C. Um, probably you'll have to download it and then take screen images. We're about to label things and work our way through this as part of this video. What you see in question one there is a very simple uh, generator. Now, I'm telling you in the question up here that it is a DC generator. And we'll find in a few more moments that AC and DC generators are exactly the same, excepting for the one thing here that this is pointing out to the commutator. In a DC generator, we will have a split ring commutator. So I'll write that down as we know this is the split ring commutator. Okay, and, and we've met that split ring commutator before. Uh, that is a split ring of the DC motor. Um, we have a coil here that that split ring is associated with. So each half of the split ring is associated with one side or one end of that coil. The AC generator only has one difference and it replaces the split ring with a slip ring. Whoever thought these two words um, as the difference uh, should have been shot. Um, split ring, DC, and slip ring, AC. Now you try to remember that. Okay, there's not much difference between split and slip. Okay, so we're going to label the DC generator here knowing that the only difference is that highlighted arrow. Right, so going around here, we've already ice, um, determine this section here, that is, hang around there, that is the coil, okay? Uh, that coil should be wrapped around an armature of some, um, some sort, most likely a laminated core of soft iron, um, and that would help the magnetic field between the two magnets. So that's our next one that we're gonna do. These are the magnet, okay? Um, and they are supplying the magnetic field or the flux so it supplies flux with the, uh, into the coil, okay? Because it's the rate of change, oh, I'll make the proportional sign, um, EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux, as we know, okay? So we need some flux. Um, so you'll notice that this, um, these two magnets here are curved on their surface. And so we'll just add a little additional piece of information here that these are radial field, radial magnets. They don't have to be radial magnets, um, magnetic field. Um, it's just what the radial magnetic field does is it concentrates the flux into the center of that coil. And as a result, there is a greater um, rate of change of flux. Um, now that second arrow here on this other side here is pointing to that thing. There's another one on the other side over here. We know that as the brush, okay? Uh, this is the axle, 
axle, the other thing, or the axis, okay, it's the thing that's um, going to make this thing turn on an, uh, a wheel, and this is the direction of rotation. Okay, so let's see if do we need to identify any functions now. So we've identified the parts. I've actually done the function of the magnet. The, the function of the magnet over there is to supply the flux into the coil. Um, the radial field, its um, function is to increase flux into the coil. Um, the split ring commutator, um, it has the same function as it does in the motor and this reverses the current. Now, let's do this right. In a motor, it reverses the current going out into the coil every half turn. I'll say that again. In a motor, the DC split ring commutator reverses the current going into the coil every half turn. In a generator, it does exactly the same thing, but in the outward direction. So it reverses the current coming out, coming out of the coil every half turn. Okay, so I'll say this one more time. The DC split ring commutator, so it's the split ring commutator, we don't normally put the DC in front of it, the split ring commutator in a motor reverses the current going in to the coil every half turn. In a generator, it reverses the current coming out of the coil every half turn, and that makes it a DC. Okay. Um, the brush uh, over here, which the... Um, which we have in both an, um, the split ring and the slip ring. Uh, the brush is an electrical contact. Oops, electrical contact. <clears throat> and it supplies uh, the ability to get the electricity out to the outer circuit from a coil. So remembering that the function of a generator is actually to generate electricity. So electricity is created in here. And it must move from inside this coil to outside into our lamp uh, or outside circuit, whatever we want to use. So the brush is the connection between the coil itself and the external circuit. Okay, so there are all the, um, uh, the main parts of the DC generator and their function. So you should be able to identify that. So if you need to pause the video now and make sure that you have um, clearly identified the function and the, um, and the uh, parts of this uh, generator, please do so. All right, moving on, I'll just get through my annotations. So, oh no, it's still forward, I think, okay. And moving on to the second part down the bottom, oops, got it. Um, part two says, complete the diagram below that compares a DC motor to a DC generator. So um, we're going to, this is going to be um, universal for both DC and AC, DC and AC generators, okay? So we're going to convert, um, compare a DC motor because we know an AC motor has a totally different structure. Um, it's an induction motor. Um, we're just comparing the DC motor here to the DC and AC generator because they have the same structure. They look exactly the same um, in reality. So what does a motor do? It converts electrical energy into kinetic energy. So it is a device that converts electrical energy into kinetic energy. So we put electrical energy in, and this is from an external power source. Okay, and that's power source in, um, could be from uh, the power point or it could be a battery. And we get kinetic energy out. That's rotational motion and that rotational motion can be um, used to do whatever we want a motor to do. 
The generator is the exact opposite. We put in kinetic energy. And we get out electrical energy. So this kinetic energy is the hard part. Where do we get this kinetic energy from? And most of the time we boil water to get this. So we, we make steam. And this steam um, it turns a fan. And that fan gives us rotation. And that rotation moves the coil and the generator generates electricity. And we use the electrical energy. That's, on a, <clears throat> that's a large scale generator. Um, the controversy at the moment is how we generate that steam. Um, we can use coal-fired power stations where we burn coal to boil that water. We can use nuclear energy to, um, to create that steam. But all we need to do is turn this fan. So we can also use hydroelectric. Um, we use a, a river that flows downhill and that can actually turn um, a propeller of some sort and that causes that rotation. So we just need to rotate an object. We need to rotate the coil, and that's the object that is important that we need to do. Okay. So this is the uh, a diagram that you can use to compare a generator to the DC motor. So they are reverses to each other. Okay. They have slightly different functions. I'm uh, sorry, got slightly different structures, but um, in reality, they, they basically are the same object. They just do different things, they reverse each other. Once again, in this, we are only convert, um, looking at a DC motor. A DC motor is really a reverse of the generator. Um, so the AC motor does not go into this question at all. If you need a few more moments to complete this question, please pause the video before we move on. Right, moving on to question Three now, what is the difference between AC generators and DC generators? So we have an AC and a DC. And I said before that the AC and the DC generators and the only difference between them is the commutator. It's this type of commutator. In a few more moments, we'll have a look at the two commutators in another video um, where I'll show you the one from the laboratory. So here we recognize this one here on this side over here um, as being having a commutator that is that one. And we recognize that as the slip ring, sorry, the split, I can't get this wrong now. It is the split ring. Okay? If it's a split ring, I'm just going to rub this stuff out from above because I don't want you to look at that subconsciously. That is a slip ring, a, uh, I'll try it again. It is a split ring, and as a result, this is a DC generator. Okay. This over here is two rings. Okay. Um, often those two rings have a, another uh, core in between them um, so that they are not suspended like that, and we'll see uh, how they look in a real generator uh, in a few more moments. But these are the slip rings. As I said, whoever decided to name these two rings um, should have been shot. So this slip ring um, makes it an AC generator. Okay. Now the AC generator um, does not care about reversal of um, the electricity as it comes out of the coil. So remembering, let's go back over to the split ring. Its function is to reverse the um, current coming from the coil every half turn. Okay, so it's from. So when it's from the coil, this is a generator because the it's the EMF is in the coil, and we want it to come out to the outer, um, this is the external circuit out here called, where they just call it resistance. Okay, so if we get DC, if we have this reversing every half turn, then it becomes a DC generator. The slip rings, however, don't do this reversal. All they do is take the electricity, the EMF that is in 
the coil. And we have two rings, one and two, like them in different colors. Okay. And each of these rings is attached to one end of the coil. So this one here is the orange, and that's always attached to the orange ring there. And this one here is always attached to the green ring. Okay. So these brushes, which are, I'll just make it a little darker, these brushes here and here, always are attached to one end of the coil. So it just simply means that the electricity, the EMF that is inside this coil is given to the external circuit. So it doesn't reverse it, it just uses whatever it is, whatever we get in the center here is taken out. So any of the EMF is, um, is taken out to the external circuit. So that's the difference between the slip ring, which is AC, and the split ring, which is DC. If you need to pause the video, do so now. Right, moving on. Um, as a result of a slip ring, okay, we've got slip and a split ring, we get two different forms of EMF generation or current generation. So it's the current we are looking at here. So it doesn't matter, EMF will reverse or not reverse depending on the DC or the AC generator. So we know for a DC, we will get, for that's a half turn, and then the reversal gives a second turn. So we get that shape, um, depending on what, which, um, if the, uh, we start with a horizontal um, coil or a vertical coil. Let's just, I'll just use the sine curve at the moment. Okay. The AC generator, we're doing it for one revolution doesn't reverse the coil, sorry, doesn't reverse the current. So we actually get negative um, current, which means it's reversing, the current reverses its actual direction. Here, the reversal, which the, when the current comes down here, so this would be normally what happens as the, as the current turn, uh, sorry, as the coil turns, we will get reversal of the, coil, uh, of the current in the coil. But what's the commutator doing? It's reversing the reversal. So it makes it come up and become um, DC um, instead, okay? Whereas the AC doesn't reverse it at all. It just says whatever's in the coil comes out, okay? So if you take, need to take time, uh, pause the video uh, before we move on. Okay, now I'm going to leave you to go through this, um, this one here. This is where we take all of the little components and we say what is their function. So we know that the split ring um, is um, a DC generator only. The slip ring is an AC generator only and you can write what their, fu um, their functions are. However, all the others are actually in both. So the spring-loaded brushes, the stator, the rotor, and the curved magnetic field, the a soft iron core, and the laminated core, all to do with um, uh, normal AC and DC. So we just got to go through there and tell me what is their function. So you can complete that at your leisure. Right, now, We've got a, a single page here that I can't show all at once, excepting in the very small version. So I will go out, there we are. Oh, try again. again. Uh, I've got to go down. And, oh, it doesn't really want to do it. I'll just try passing. Okay, right here. I'll move it up in a few more moments. You'll notice we're going to draw two graphs in this, in this moment. We've got at the bottom of this page here, we have a, um, a generator, and you'll notice the generator is an AC generator. And the reason why, if you zoom in, that is a um, slip ring commutator there. 
And we are going to have a look at the flux through this as it does one evolution. And then we're going to draw the EMF curve. Now we've done a couple of these already, um, but we just need to uh, practice one more time. So I'm going to put it into that position there um, so we can see nearly everything on that page. Right. So we look at number one here, this first diagram. We see that the coil is in this orientation to the magnetic field. So all those field lines are going through the face of that coil. So at this point here, it's maximum, okay? In the second point, the flux is zero. So there's the zero line, okay? So this is the first graph up here. Um, so therefore it's zero. Now the coil then keeps on reversing. So we're now looking at the back of the coil. So the front, the first one over here, the face of the coil was facing up. Now the face is facing down and the front of the coil, the coil that's facing up is its back. So it's gonna have negative EMF, sorry, negative flux. And then back to this one here, there is no flux going through that coil. And finally, we're back to its original position. We know that as this happens, it varies as a um, sine or cos curve. And so this shape here is a cos curve. So we're going to do a cos curve like that. Okay, so we know that the flux varies as, um, and the horizontal here would be measuring time in somehow seconds. So um, thi uh, flux is equal to cos of t. So it's, um, sorry, it's proportional to cos of t, okay? Um, so we now need to find uh, EMF. So the next curve down is the EMF curve. Now we know that EMF is equal to um, minus n, the thigh bit of t. So just um, differentiating um, the, this curve above, um, the thigh bit t would equal, now it's going to be proportional to, cos goes to sine, and it's going to be uh, minus sine. Okay? So remember, if you differentiate sine, it goes to cos, um, and therefore differentiating cos, you go back to minus sine because cos differentiates to minus sine. Okay. Um, that means that EMF in the second one here is going to equal minus N times sine and negative sine T. Now, the member of the negative here is to do with Lenz's law. So it becomes N sine T. Um, and drawing that, now this N is the number of loops. So we'll just say that that is maximum. It's going to be a sine curve now and it'll just reach maximum like that, okay? Right here. Um, so that's how we go from a thigh curve, a flux curve, to an EMF curve, okay? So we've been doing that already, but this is now applying it to a, um, a generator. Okay, if you need to have time to draw that, please do so. Moving on. Right, let's get some slightly larger things now. Good. The next question is describe the effect on the generated EMF if the coil is turned faster. So what would happen if we um, are turning the coil twice as fast, for instance, or three times as fast? So we always start with EMF is equal to minus N the thigh bit of T and we work out what it is that we're changing. In this case, if we're turning the coil faster, we are increasing the rate of change with diabetes. Okay? So if we turn it twice as fast, so if this is doubled, then EMF would be doubled. So as the coil is turned faster, we would increase EMF in proportion to the, um, to the increase in speed, okay? So in proportion. So twice as fast, twice as much EMF. If we increase the number of windings, okay? So going back to our Faraday's law up here, 
This time we're changing M, M here, and if we increase that M, N and E are proportional to each other. So the number more loops, the more EMF. So what we'd get would be increase EMF in proportion. Okay. Now, this is um, going back to what is the purpose of the armature or the soft iron core. Now the soft iron core is what we wrap the loop around, the loops and the windings. Um, what is its purpose? Well, this increases the amount of um, flux going through the coil. In that case, it would be increasing the thigh bit of tea again. So by increasing the amount of flux, so it increases um, flux, I should say, it's thigh. And if I've got an increased thigh, then as we are turning it, we have an increased dithyba to T, and therefore it increases um, EMF, EMF. Now we can't say it's in proportion because we don't know um, what is the nature of this soft iron core. Is it laminated? Is it not laminated? Um, and so on. Okay, I hope that's okay. Right, um, a coil generates a maximum EMF of 12 volts when it is turned through one term in four seconds. So we're now going to try and draw that so it's 12 volts AC um, when it goes through one turn in four seconds. So we, let's try and draw that. We don't have to use the whole of this grid, so use common sense here when we're doing it. Shapes going. Okay. Now I'll just draw it by hand. Okay. So there's the first one, and okay. So we want um, we can choose a sine curve or a cos curve. It's always easier to draw the um, the sine curve. So we're going to do that. And um, so this is really, really rough that I might just one more time try a more straightened line. I just for no reason it's just not turning on shapes. Okay, so okay. And I'm going to do four seconds. Okay, I want it to be as up as much as possible down, so please, you can use um, a better diagram at home. So this is four seconds, and that was two seconds. Okay. Now, the next thing is we're asked to do is we're asked to rotate this at twice the speed, I think, is it? Yeah, twice the fast. Okay. I wish I could have and put on this shape. So I'm just going to just clear the rotation. Just hold me, give me a few seconds. I'll see if I can get this to work. No, it's just not working, I'm afraid, guys. So we're going to have to deal with my really rubbishy, and I might just do this um, in that case off a grid. Okay, so. Right. So here we are easy for me to do it this way. So there is an AC where it's one revolution in four seconds, that's four and two, and it goes up to this and down to that version there. So we'll just call that A, and this is minus A, and this is volts. Okay. Um, oh no, it's, we actually know how much that is. A is 12 volts, and that is 12 volts down there. Right. Um, we're now doing it twice as fast, so um, let's, I'll just, do not copy this yet. So it's going to go up to 24 volts and down to 24 volts. So we'll do that, and then that. 
Right, so we're now increasing the maximum that it goes up and down, so it goes to 24 in the, both directions, positive and negative 24. But if you're rotating it twice as fast, then it's not that pink curve. That, what's wrong with that pink curve? It's got to be that there's now two revolutions in four seconds. So we have to have that pink curve repeated twice. So it's going to be that there is one, two. Okay. Still, that's a three, four. Okay. So by rotating it twice as fast, we have um, two revolutions and also increasing 24. So and we need to make sure that we um, increase the number of rotations. Um, C says draw the expected EMF if the, the windings were to double and the coil was turned twice as fast. So um, expected EMF, the coil and the numbers was to double, so the number of windings and twice as fast. So this is twice as fast. So what would happen if we doubled the EMF again? Sorry, not the, um, double the number of windings, we would double the EMF one more time. So this would now go up, not just to 12, um, to 24, it'll go up another 12. So it should go up to 36, but it's still, that goes down to 36, off the thing, and then up to 36, and down to 36 and whatever. Okay, so this is to 36. So it's really, really bad. I'm afraid that would be much better. Yours is going to be fantastic at home. Why is it 36? Okay, it's increasing by 12 for the double revolution. And it's going to, oh, we've also doubled, so that should be 48. My fault. Okay, so um, twice as fast would give us a 24, and then twice as many um, would be 48 doubling again. Okay, it's two lots of doubling. Okay, right here. There's a, a, a Rollo thing that you can now um, have a look at to clarify all this. Okay, and in the second lesson after this one today, um, we'll be doing some uh, HSC versions of these questions.